I'm still not over this J. Cole thing. I'm not going to lie. I know it's a bit dumb to keep repeating it and to keep going down that lane, but I'm still not over it. And I think as a fan of J. Cole, it's, it's just super disappointing, you know? It's just super disappointing because, like I said previously, like for the last five years, let's say, he's definitely been on one of those bossy bossy like, I'm one of the best ever to do it. People need to recognize I'm one of the best. Don't discount me. Look at my discography. I've got hits. I can rap better than you. Like he's been really letting his nuts hang. And he had a really good run with some amazing features. Very unexpected, you know, from Little Yachty and all these other different people that he was jumping on tracks with and just absolutely dupping. Then he gets the chance to prove it. When Kendrick, like, it's not even a, it's not even like a diss record really to Kendrick. It's more so a diss record to Drake. But, you know, um, what you called it? J. Cole is like, you know, collateral damage. And he gets a chance to kind of prove it, which people weren't really calling for. That's the thing that's funny. It's not like fans were really pressuring J. Cole to reply back to Kendrick. It's more so Drake, because Drake has avoided quite a bit of smoke from people. And he's kind of waved the white flag. He's become, you know, I didn't really like when he started crying about the Pusha T 40 lyric, right? About the 666 shit, right? He started getting really, you know, basically making it into be like, oh, he crossed the line type of things. Like, look, there's no, there isn't such thing as crossing the line in fucking, um, when it comes to battle and diss records. If you watch battle rap, you'll know, like, the most harshest, most horrible thing you can say to somebody is always the best. Um, especially if you can get you a win and kind of discombobulate your opponent and make him forget his bars and whatever. So it wasn't even that bad of a diss towards Kendrick, towards J. Cole. He also didn't need to reply. The pressure was mostly on Drake. But he does reply. Salute to him as a rapper, as an, as an MC. Fucking amazing. He then packages that reply in an EP before his album's about to drop, which is um, another level, right? Imagine. You don't only just put out the seven-minute drill. You put out also an EP, right? Might delete later. Fucking amazing. Then you hear it. It's a bit of a softy, softy thing. Jab, jab, jab. Not really anything really going on there to really kind of, you know, nothing really... um to really chew on but he does kind of set up a premise of like oh let's question Kendrick's greatness really he does really well in that regard in that verse let's sow some some seeds of discontent let's sow some seeds of confusion and make you really question is Kendrick as good as you think he is love that love what he did there right and if you okay cool that's setting up for another round of records when Kendrick replies then two days later he's like on stage saying he can't sleep what like, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. You're like, you're just astounded. Like, what the fuck is going on, J. Cole? You couldn't sleep over a diss record that wasn't even that harshly directed at you. Also, your diss to him wasn't even that harsh either. So it makes me think to me, myself, my, my only conclusion from this was this. I think J. Cole and most rappers just get up to so much shit behind the scenes that we don't know about that only people in the industry know about, record executives, other fellow artists and shit, industry heads, right? I think that that's what they're scared of. They're scared of that shit getting out because in the era of social media, where everybody has access to you 24 hours of the day, you have access to your fans 24 hours a day, you can share every part of your life 24 hours of the day. If you can get away with something, you're going to hold on to that ability to get away with it and that secret until your grave because everything else is on is in public. So if you can get away with it, you can get away with it. So I think that's what happened. And because J. Cole is immensely private, he didn't want anything getting out that he didn't put out himself, especially because, he, you know, he doesn't really share a lot of his personal life and whatever. And he kind of keeps himself to himself, even like societally, he doesn't really talk that much about things in terms of politics and shit. He kind of just minds his business, makes his music and keeps it moving, right? So maybe that's what he was worried about. He was just worried about people finding out things about him that he never would tell us or the public, or he never would share. That's what was really... So imagine throwing away your career as an MC, throwing away your credit, because, you know, as an artist, he's fine. I think most people who check for J. Cole's music don't care about this beef at all. They just want the fall off to drop. That's it. But as a MC, as a rapper, his credibility is kapoop. It's gone. It's finished. It's done. It's finito. So he's willing to risk losing his credibility as an MC, which is wild because he's one of the best. I would say he's probably the best rapper of the three, personally for me. Um, maybe Kendrick has the performances and 
you know, stage presence in live shows because I've seen Kendrick perform live. He's fucking phenomenal live. I guess Drake is probably the better all round artist because he can do he can do everything basically, right? He's a Swiss Army knife in that respect. Even if you don't like his music, Drake is definitely able to do more stuff. Like he can jump on grime, jump on pop, do the whole rapidly backpack rap stuff and shit. R and B. The other guys are a little bit maybe narrow, um, and even the content of what he says. But there's no denying in my in my head in my fucking position that J Cole hands down is the best rapper. Um, the best one that you want you want to listen to right freestyles and um, verses like just incredible so for him to sacrifice that legacy of him being one of the best rappers ever just because he's scared of people finding out that i don't know you know he likes to eat ass or he's into threesomes or maybe he cut whatever he's whatever people someone he would have said about him is fucking insane it really is insane or the other side of things is that he's always just been a giant pussy and when he was faced with up with competition and actually was challenged, he wilted and took his ball and went home. That's the other side of things. But I think this rant, actually the whole episode, the new recent episode that dropped at the moment um, of New Rory and More, I forgot what number episode it is actually. Let me actually check it here on my phone. But there's a recent episode of New Old Rory and More where Moore is in rare fucking form. This is probably one of the best Moore performances on a pod in a while. And it's really good as well because a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, just mainly fucking, fucking Danny from the stop, really, um, were questioning Moore's kind of, you know, place on the podcast and just in podcasting in general, saying he's too lackadaisical, he goes through the motions, he doesn't really give it up, he's too cool for school. But I like Mo. I think I like his presence on pods. I think he's a necessary person. I think it's nice to have somebody in the podcast world who doesn't want to engage in all the drama and nonsense, all the weird shit, and doesn't want to get in all the gossip and shit, and just likes to talk music and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and some and has his own point of view. And in this particular episode, episode number two five eight, he has a legendary rant about J. Cole and basically echoes a lot of my thoughts and says some other really funny stuff. But this is one of the clips that's really incredible and kind of gets across why a lot of J. Cole fans, myself included, are disappointed that he wasn't able to step up to the plate. This is um, more on J. Cole apologizing to Kendrick Lamar. This is what this is, bro. You can no longer do that. You can no longer say, yo, I'm the best. I'm better than all of y'all. Niggas gonna look around like, who are you talking to? We just, <laughs> nigga, you couldn't sleep for three days. You was you, nigga. You, was, you couldn't sleep. This is worse than Drake having tummy problems. This is the worst shit I've ever seen. This this is the worst shit I have ever seen in hip hop as far as just MCs like rapping. Indeed. This is the worst shit ever. So I'd had no bro, niggas was hitting me like, yo, is this real? So I'm like, there's no way he said he said, I thought he was lining it up to be like so I thought man, he was gonna say fuck, psych and then drop perform. the record. <laughs> I thought he was gonna be like, drop the record, nigga. I thought the second one was coming. I was waiting to hit suck my dick. I was I thought he was going there. I'm barking, I'm like, yo, he about to, he said the fuck. This ain't real. He about to kill us, nigga. We're gonna get another record right here on the stream. That nigga went in to love yours. I said no. <laughs> You don't go in the love yours after the beef. And that's the truth. And you know what's really sad about it too? Look at the face. That's fucking incredible. You know what's really sad about it too? Dreamville was fucking awesome. I watched some of the clips. The performances were sick, especially J. Cole's. He's really good live, man. Dreamville was really well produced, really well put together. I think he even announced on the stage that he doesn't really have many in him, which is odd because he hardly does anything. I don't have any more in me. This might be my last dream of it. It's like, come on, bro. Like, what does it mean? This is last dream of performing or last dream of festival? Oh, it's like, bro, you do it once a year. Like, stop being fucking lazy. But the performance was fucking sick. It was really, really good. So that's what makes it really sad. Like, he had a really good performance. Um, I think a lot of people were hoping that he would bring out Drake to perform fucking, you know, um, what you call it? Um, first person shooter. That didn't happen, of course. And then here we are with J. Cole basically apologizing for you know, clapping back at Kendrick when Kendrick's been clapping at all of them, you know, ever since he popped up on the scene. Kendrick has made it very clear that he doesn't rate them all as fucking MTs and shit. So it's odd. It's a really bizarre thing. I really would love to know what the truth is of it, or the whole thing. Um, maybe it is, you know, he's suffering from his mental health shit. I don't really fucking know. Either way, I'm too disappointed and my heart is broken, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. I love J. Cole. And to see him fucking refuse to compete is like, wow. Okay, cool, man. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. But it does explain a lot, though, especially when he's come to his absences. He just wants to kind of move to the beat of his own drum. He just wants to do his own thing. He doesn't want to be confined or restricted by the, you know, 